So, tell us, we've asked everybody else for a prediction how they yes. think things are going to pan out tonight. What are you thinking? I saw, I was watching, I saw that. I'm not as confident as Mr 86 seats I over here. I said 80, just no. to be clear. 86. You're trying to verbal me already, we've just started. <laughs> I heard 86. Did you hear 86? I heard 86. I heard 86. I heard 86. Everybody I heard, heard 86. <laughs> Everyone um, heard 86. I heard 80 because I like to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh, no, no, I'm not, I'm not nearly that confident, but I, I'm expecting it to fall around 81 or something. I'm basing that on things I've heard from people who should know that there's kind of a baseline, I think, for Labor of about 77, 78, and then there's a bunch of seats that are in doubt. And even if most of them break the coalition's way, you end up at a low 80s sort of a figure. So that's what I'm Do you see any pathway for Scott Morrison to return to the Lodge at this point? I think it's a very skinny pathway. The last time I saw a skinny pathway was Donald Trump in 2016. There is a possibility, but I don't really see specifically how it can happen. The only way is in a minority situation. Look. Alan Jones is a very well-known radio commentator, but not everything he says is factually accurate. Uh, Alan Jones, you've just joined us, so let me just uh, throw another question your way. Your prediction, which I asked the panel at the start of the evening as well, on how tonight is going to unfold, what is your prediction? Well, look, I've heard a lot of talk. Uh, there is a great contradiction here between what I think and what the bookies think. The bookies don't throw money around, and they've got Scott Morrison at $8 and um, Bill Shorten's at Winks Odds. That's completely at variance from my understanding of it. If you look at the map of Australia and you just take it state by state, I don't see anything in Western Australia for the Labor Party. They would have some hopes for Hannah Beasley in Swan, but the, nonetheless the Coalition would be expecting, I think, uh, to win Cowan. If you go to South Australia, it's most probably Lion Ball. If you go to the Northern Territory, there's nothing in the Northern Territory for Labor. There are question marks, though, over whether Labor can hang on to Lingiari. Um, and uh, there's two seats there, whether they can hang Solid. on to those. You go to the ACT, there's nothing there for Labor to win. They've got the seats. You go to Tasmania, they hold all the seats. And Scott Morrison would expect to have some chance in Bass and perhaps Braddon. So then you go to Queensland, and I'm saying, well, where are these seats? I don't believe Dutton will be beaten in Dixon. They've got to hang on to Herbert. I don't think they can. They won't win Capricornia or Leichhardt. They always expect to win uh, Brisbane and Ford. They're very, very tight seats, but there's no evidence from what I have, the people I've spoken to, that Labor can win either of the, any of those seats. So I'm saying to myself, where on earth are they going to pick up seats in Queensland, though there is a chance that the coalition can. So you then come to New South Wales and they've got to hang on to Lindsay. Now, that has moved all over the place. It looked as though the Liberals could win it. The Labor Party have come back in Lindsay. I heard some talk uh, about Gilmore, and while the Liberals thought Gilmore was something they could retain, I think the, the Labor candidate, Phillips, has been in the field for a long time, and she is a very formidable figure there, so she's a chance. But Labor have got to hang on to Dobell. Um, uh, Liberals will win Wentworth. There's a lot of talk about Warringah, but even if Tony Abbott were rolled, it wouldn't be by the Labor Party. So I can't see where the seats are there in numbers for Labor, which takes you to Victoria. Then they thought they could win Karangamite. I understand that's come back now uh, to the coalition. They most probably will win Dunkley because of the redistribution. <coughs> There's some talk about La Trobe, but that's, you know, three and a half percent in La Trobe. Um, so I, I just don't Excuse know me. where the, the, the 76, I hear all this business about swings here and swings there. But these, this is going to be very uneven. And there's a factor at work here that wasn't a factor in the last election. And admittedly, the coalition have always said, you can't win a federal election if you don't get 40% of the vote. And they're saying, oh, the coalition has only got 39. They're in trouble. But Palmer wasn't here in 2016. And Palmer in some parts of Australia is polling 5, 6 and 7%. And those polls will, those preferences will go to the coalition. So that's a variable here which hasn't, which can't be properly assessed. And in the last election, I mean, Turnbull was an absolute, ran an absolutely hopeless campaign. There was division in the Liberal Party as a result of Turnbull being knifed. I think that's, apart from Victoria, I think the Turnbull factor is a factor in Victoria. But apart from that, Morrison's run an excellent campaign. The Palmer votes, we don't know where they go. And I just, I don't know, I, it, you know, the bookies say it's all over, we might as well pack up the shop. But in an analysis of the seats, I'm struggling to see where, I'm not saying Scott Morrison can get <coughs> to 76 either, but I'm simply saying all the talks about Labor and I don't see how they're going to get to 76. Now, I guess we'll know uh, early on in the night to see what the movement of the figures are, but it, it is difficult to predict the at this tr point. The trouble with that analysis though, Alan, I mean, it's, it's um granular as it is, is that everything has to go right in every one of those 20 circumstances that you just articulated. Everything has to go right in every one of those 20 circumstances that you just articulated.
I don't see anything in Western Australia for the Labor Party. Yeah, but right. again, it would look like the status quo will remain in Western Australia. Yeah. They would have hum some hopes for Hannah Beasley in Swan. Even though there's been a tiny swing to Hannah Beasley, Steve Irons gets another term in Parliament. There's nothing in the Northern Territory for Labor. There are question marks, though, over whether Labor can hang on to Lingiari. Um, and uh, there's two seats there, whether they can hang Solid. on to those. But, uh, as you can see, there's a 6.3% swing. There's a 3.3% swing, which puts um, puts Solomon back into the Duff, into the Labor. It's still Labor category. It's now marginal again. You go to the ACT. There's nothing there for Labor to win. They've got the seats. David Smith in the ACT. He switched to the new seat in the lower house from the from the upper house. Canberra Alicia Payne replaces Gabe Brotman. You go to Tasmania. They hold all the seats. And Scott Morrison would expect to have some chance in Bass and perhaps Braddon. With Bass and Braddon have been Liberal gains in northern Tasmania. Let's have a look at Bass down in Tasmania. Braddon uh, as well in Tasmania. Well, this is trouble for Labor. Yep. Yep. I don't believe Dutton will be beaten in Dixon. And after preferences, it's a 3.8% swing to Peter Dutton. Winning a seventh term in office is enough to make any politician smile. <laughs> They've got to hang on to Herbert. I don't think they can. And there is a swing of 6.4% to the LNP. Herbert That's in the Liberal column yep. there, 10%. Yep. They won't win Capricornia or Leichhardt. Capricornia, the most marginal seat at the last election. Michelle Laundrie's on 40%, 24.7 for Labor. Look at the swing here. 12% again. In the Cairns-based seat of Leichhardt, held on and off for the last 20 years by Warren Inch, nowhere near enough for uh, Warren Inch to lose that seat. They always expect to win uh, Brisbane and Ford. They're very, very tight seats, but there's no evidence from what I have, the people I've spoken to, that Labor can win either of the, any of those seats. Well, if that, if that finishes up like that, that could be defining moments. The seat of Ford stretches from Brisbane's southern fringes to the Gold Coast and it's been held by the LNP's Bert Van Manen since 2010. Tonight the ABC's projecting almost an 8% swing to Mr Van Manen. That's a strong result for Bert Van Very. Van where on earth are they going to pick up seats in Queensland, though there is a chance that the coalition can. And in Queensland, what we've seen, big drop in the Labor vote, down 4.3, One Nation up, UAP up. And if you look at the, let's look at the overall primary vote up there, 43, 26.6, .6. that's a terrible. These figures are looking like 2004 when John Howard swept Queensland. They've got to hang on to Lindsay. Now, that has moved all over the place. It looked as though the Liberals could win it. But that's yes. a, and about a 6% swing. No, it's a 6% swing to the Liberal Party and Melissa McIntosh will be the new Liberal MP for Lindsay. But Labor have got to hang on to Dobell. That's uh, safe, that's even though Palmer's done uh, almost 6% there. Yeah. Um, uh, Liberals will win Wentworth. Dave Sharma for the Liberal Party trying for a second time. He is ahead. So he's now polling 46% of the primary vote. It's Wentworth at the moment. Uh, Clark, Dave Sharma's on 44.6, Karen Phelps 34.5. And while the Liberals thought Gilmore was something they could retain, I think the, the Labor candidate Phillips has been in the field for a long time and she is a very formidable figure there, so she's a chance. But still Fiona Phillips on uh, just under 39%. Gilmore is a Labor gain. It may be the only game for the Labor Party in this entire election at this stage. There's a lot of talk about Warringah, but even if Tony Abbott were rolled, it wouldn't be by the Labor Party. And Warringah, one of the other, one of the big stories of the election, which a lot of people in Warringah are very excited about, but it didn't wash through to the rest of the country, is an independent gain with the defeat of Tony Abbott, the former Prime Minister. Uh, those numbers indicate that his career here in Warringah is finished. They most probably will win Dunkley because of the redistribution. We classified them as being Labor seats before the redistribution, because Dunkley and Kerangamite, we'd already classified as Labor held uh, Labor seats, so they've retained both. There's some talk about La Trobe, but that's, you know, three and a half percent. And the Trobe's held by Jason Wood. Uh, he only held it by 3.2 percent, and it looks like he, he's got a swing to him. In the seat of La Trobe, showing uh, a swing to uh, the uh, Liberal Party. Palmer wasn't here in 2016, and Palmer in some parts of Australia is polling 5, 6 and 7 per cent. Clive Palmer says his preferences significantly helped the coalition to election victory. Of course, our shifty short ads across Australia, I think we've been very successful in su suppressing the Labor vote. Large sections of the media were writing on the basis of hope, not reality. But the media kept on writing all of that, and I think I said when we came on here tonight at half past five, I didn't think that Mr Shorten could get 76 seats. Now, the, the, the polls had, them, had him over the line, the punters had him over the line. Coalition on 
Uh, 78 Labor on 67. I'm expecting it to fall around 81. Labor on 67. 81. 67. 81. 67. Yeah, but not everything he says is factually accurate. <laughs> How good is Australia? Yeah!